Hi everyone. So we are starting now. <clears throat> uh, my name is uh, Nav Singh. I'm from Montreal. And a little bit about myself. I'm a GDE for Android. GDE is a Google-sponsored program. It's called Google Developer Experts. And I'm also a GDG co-organizer with the GDG Montreal chapter, which is we are organizing this DevFest today. And apart from that, I'm working at Manual Life as a mobile software engineer. And today we will talk about accessibility in Android applications. So we will see how we're going to implement the accessibility when we are developing user interfaces using Jetpack Compose and XML based UIs. So if you are Android engineer, you know the both worlds. Before we are developing our user interfaces using the XML and now we are shifted towards the new framework which is called Jetpack Compose. And then we will see how we're going to test the tester Android applications using various tools and if there is a possibility to write in the automated tests for accessibility and some manual tools. So this is the very short accessibility definition. So when it comes to Android app, like the applications, and accessibility, it's, it's by, we just want to make sure that our application can be accessible by everyone. By everyone, I mean here is like the people who have some sort of any kind of disabilities, maybe low vision or any, some temporary disabilities. You can see the, see the image there. There are a couple of categories like permanent and temporary and situational. So, yeah. So when we are talking about the accessibility in Android applications, we are making sure that we are covering those scenarios and make sure that people can use our application without any issues or problems. So according to the World Bank's reports, there are almost like a 15% of the population have some sort of disability issues. And if you are providing accessibility support into your applications, that means you are increasing your app's reach so that if your application is accessible, using tools like uh, keyboards or switches or talkback or screen reader. That means like more people can use your application. The second thing, <laughs> the second impact is improving the app's versatility. So when we are talking about the making our applications accessible, that means like we are not targeting only the people, those who have some sort of disabilities, but we are also giving an opportunity to the people, those who don't have any kind of disabilities, so that they can use those tools that are used by the other folks, those who have some sort of disability. For example, they, the normal folks can also use keyboard or the switches to interact with their mobile applications. So how Android enables accessibility? There are a couple of couple of ways that Android providing support for accessibility and one of the main is like providing the uh, spoken feedback. So whatever is on the user, in, like the on the UI, the user is currently <clears throat> seeing on the screen. The, the systems like uh, the applications like TalkBack or the screen reader by Samsung, they provide a spoken feedback when it's turned on. So how are we gonna make our applications accessible. The first one is the task flows. So it, it totally depends on, we need to figure out which task flows are very important, like the super important in our application. So for example, I'm working at Manulife and I'm working on health insurance app. So if there is a, like the major use case for us is like submit a claim. So when the user comes in and we need to make sure that the task flows, they are not more than like a four or five steps. This is like a maximum five based on the conditions, like if you really need some information before actually user can perform that task. So the first is like you need to figure out the tasks are really simple to, to accomplish by the user and they are properly or the, the easily visible. Sorry about that. So they are easily, per, so user can easily find out those tasks. For example, if in our case, if the submit claim flow, it needs to be easily it's easily accessible to the users that we cannot put in something under like a door and then go to the settings or then find that kind of options. So you need to really figure out things so that people can easily, easily access the major features of your application. The second is the action target size. So all the clickable actions, they need to be pro uh, follow the design guidelines, specifically accessible 
touch target size. I will cover in the next slide what is the recommendations from the material design, which is the recommended uh, design system that mostly Android industry is using right now. The third one is labeling the user interface controls. So as I mentioned earlier, like <clears throat> when we are using tools like screen reader or talkback, so we, if we provided the proper information like the labeling for all the, all the components on our screen, the talkback or any other tool can only provide them the meaningful information to the user. So we need to make sure that we provide the proper labeling for all the components that are on the screen. The fourth one is um, enabling the focus-based navigation. So TalkBack and Screen Reader, they are like the applications that user install on their uh, uh, phones. But if their user is using any uh, hardware uh, input method, for example, switches or the keyboards, then we need to make sure that they can interact with their application using those. And we make sure that the focus, based, the, the focus system is setting pro set proper so that when they navigate using the arrows from the keyboard, they, they, where they expect they should go there, not like some random uh, kind of a focus navigation should be there. So the guidelines, the first one is for the touch target size. It's the recommended by the material design. So every touch target component on the screen should be a 48 by 48 dips. And if there is an icon or images, you can see there, they can be a, like a 24 by 24, but we need to wrap it around up. Like a, we should give it some sort of padding so that it at the end the touch target should meet the requirements. And <clears throat> There is another uh, recommendation for the color contrast ratios. So when you are using the large text, which is like 40 point or 18 point, then the ratio is like three by one against the background. And for the small text, it's like four, five, one against the background. So the, I, will, I will show you the tools later on, how we can actually make sure that the, the, the color contrast ratio is meeting the requirements or not. So recently I was working on a, a course from Coursera, like a user interfaces design, I guess. So when I'm using the Figma to design some sort of uh, like a flag and I have some, some words in there, there is a really cool plugin in there which is called A11Y color contrast checker. So you select the component and then you run it and it will show you if there is any issues on your particular component specific to the color contrast. And right now there is no issue, so it shows me that the what's the ratio current is, and if there is any sort of issues, it shows up there, and instead of saying amazing, they show like what are the issues in your current component. So now we will see uh, XML-based implementation, like how we can provide the content labels and touch target size, color contrast, things like that. So first thing is the image view. So mostly if, if we are using images in our applications, sometimes most, like most of the time they are just like a decorative. So for example, if I'm developing app for any XY company, we have XY company's logo there and we don't care to provide the content description there. So if we don't provide the content description, that it will automatically skip by the tools like a talkback or screen reader. But in this case, I have provided I provided the description for that logo, which is like nav. And you can see at the bottom, I have turned the talkback on and it shows me like what that image is, up, like uh, conveying the user that this image is, means what like content description goes here. So yeah, if you don't want to provide any sort of content description, I will cover in that in the next slide. And sometimes we do have like um, need to provide the contextual context de description. Because for example, if, if we are supporting some sort of a company where you have uh, custom logos for different clients that you need to show and you want to provide the description based on that. For example, if we have a company XYZ, then I can programmatically check the, like based on the company's information, I can use the method which is set content description. This is the, uh, from the Kotlin, so it's a property accessor. So I have the main binding view, which is like my layout, and then the image logo holders. It's ID of the image view, and then I'm setting the content description. The 
the next one is the heading so this is only available starting from API 28 I guess it's uh, Android 10 so you can use the accessibility heading uh, property on the any sort of views for example mostly it's basically for the text views so that user can navigate through the user square like the interface uh, using the heading based navigation which is basically like if you have three four paragraphs mostly like let's say you have terms and conditions and it's really big big text you don't want the, your user to go through each and everything then you can just labels your um, specific headings and then user can uh, perform the navigation using the headings so the next one is making components focusable so by default every component is focusable for, by the tools like talkback or screen reader but in some cases if you really want to make sure that those components are focusable for by, uh, by the tools then there are two properties one is focusable which is which is exist since api 1 but then there is a next one uh, like the new <clears throat> new API available which is screen reader focusable starting with Android 10 and when we make make the prop, like the particular view accessible then our talkback or any tool accessibility service knows that it needs to process this particular component on the screen so this is the example of the grouping of content so sometimes like most of the applications they have some sort of a components on screen for example person details or contact details and if we don't group the information then talkback like us process each and every single component and sometimes it doesn't make sense so if you want to group uh, multiple components together you can set the focusable and screen reader focusable on the parent view which is in this case linear layout and then inside I have two text views which the first name and the last name and on the screen it's the navsing next to the image you see it's it's selected as a single component and the accessibility speak it as together so that this is uh, like it says navsing all together not like nav and then go to the next one which is like last name then we have the next api which is called accessibility live region so what does what does this api do is like sometimes on the screen we have a components which are randomly shows up or like based on certain conditions we show some sort of components for example on the password if you see there is an error and <clears throat> it shows we only shows to the user like the error if there is a it, does, it doesn't meet the requirements and we set the property on that particular view here and it takes it it has a couple of options like polite none or assertive so by default it's polite like whatever currently talkback or screen reader is processing it will finish that first and then it will speak like uh, provide the information about this component but if you set it as assertive so for example if an error happened on the screen I immediately want to inform my user that there is something wrong on this, uh, with your password so we can set it assertive so what, what the talkback does is it immediately speak, like provide the feedback about, about that component So, um, so this is like skipping the components on the screen. So in this case, I don't want my talkback to process that image logo there. So I'm setting that important for accessibility property to know. But there are a couple of options like you can set the content description to like a null and it will automatically skip. But this is like more uh, readable form to actually informing the system and as well as like from the developer side so that if later on somebody works on my core base they knows that this this component needs to be skipped by the top pack so I don't have a demo like a, for focus handling but if you want to customize the focus navigation in your uh, layouts we have four options there I guess one two three four actually five so you can customize the focus handling by giving the IDs so when my particular like that tool uh, talkback is on this particular view which is like text view timer 
and what I want to do next when user performs the next navigation to the left, right, bottom or forward, you just provide the IDs and system will uh, perform the actions accordingly. You can learn more about the keyboard navigation and switch access on this one. I will share the slides afterwards. So again in Android 10 or higher we have a new property which is accessibility pane title. So this is we can set on couple uh, like a particular component so that the, we are basically informing the system that this uh, particular uh, window needs to be a little uh, like a giving extra information for that particular window. So whenever there is any changes happen to that particular given view or inside that view it will automatically processed by the system. So the next one is the traversal order. So you might might feel like the focus navigation and the traversal order is same but they both are different. The focus navigation order is working for like for the keyboard or the switches but this one is for the, the traversal order is for the talkback or screen readers. So for this text view for example it's TV timer it's the, the, the text view which is already selected there above the check details. What I want my talkback to do is like process this after the password edit box and before the CV holder which is like the bottom component. So if you I think I need to play. Sorry about that. So you see password is password is there and error is there but error is skipped and it directly goes to the text view and then if you are moving backward it goes to the password uh, to the error and then go back to the password. So if you want to customize the traversing order you can use these two properties like traversal after and traversal before. So the next is the custom actions. So sometimes we do like we don't always have the click actions or the long click listeners on our views so that there might be some sort of custom actions like <clears throat> like the swiping right or swipe left but if user is using the talkback or screen reader there is no way actually to perform those actions on the screen. So in that case we can provide the custom actions so that when user is using the any kind of accessibility tool these actions are exposed by the system to the user by saying that custom actions available and then they like you see in the demo like it shows up the pop-up and there is an actions option and it shows the action and using this API like add accessibility action from the view compact we give it a three property it has three properties the view where we want to expose those actions then the label so what will system say about that action and the last one is the command that if you want to perform some actions on that one so in this case I'm saying just uh, just the action but there is no any code that I want to perform execute. So next is understandable actions. So by default for all the actions like long click or the click what system says is like double tap to activate but it doesn't provide like a contextual information there. So in this case what I am saying is like when user is performing the action long click instead of saying like double press to double press and hold to perform the long click it will say double press and hold for favorite like whatever label you provide after the double tap and perform it will append that label to the action so that it's more clear to the user like what that long click actually do when they perform that action. So if you see there when I am saying check details it says check details button and then provided the more information. For example this is the another API that I can write the custom accessible delegate here and in this case I am giving the action click and what I want to say is like instead of saying double tap to activate it will say double tap to check balance details so that user know that have more information that what this action actually gonna do. So this is basically the code and you can add multiple actions in there like just 
this one is for action click and in the previous slide I have added the long click but with the single delegate we can add multiple actions. And once we define the delegate then we will set the accessibility delegate on particular view. In this case I have set on the check details button and I provided the delegate that I have just created above the on the slide. Okay, so Android 14. So if you know it just recently launched Android 14 and there are a couple of new APIs launched with the Android 14. So we will go through those quickly. So the first one is the data sensitive and it, it this one is very really interesting. I would highly recommend you to check this article. I think it's happened in some country that hackers they are using the accessibility services to actually hack the banking application. So it performs some sort of actions on the application. So now the system provide the new feature or the new API accessibility data sensitive and if you set particular property on any view to say like a yes then this view should only allow interactions for them from the accessibility services that are verified by the Play Store. So when we submit our application to the Play Store and if we are providing any sort of accessibility services it will check like if the if the service sets the is accessibility tool property or not and if not they, are, they might reject the that particular application and so that we have more protection from these kind of attacks And next one we have then setting the initial accessibility focus. So if we are developing uh, UIs like um, where we, you have list of you have a list of components and for example you also have the fab button in there and in that case you might want to change the focus of the like how the system is processing the initial focus. By default it will be on the list view and it's really hard to get the focus on the fab button so if you want to change the initial initial focus by starting with android 14 we can change that using the accessibility delegate here as you see i just wrapped the in initial set request initial accessibility focus and then i'm just i think it's not gonna work anymore And then we have like throttling the content changes. So we also have like more control over the how how like uh, we want to perform like uh, in convey the information to the user. Like we can perform uh, perform some sort of delays. So specifically for things like timer or progress, or if you are developing applications for videos or whatever, then on the pro you can set the min duration between the content changes and provide the duration. So in this case. I have a timer view and which provides the timer information on the screen to the user. So in this case it will wait for next 10 seconds and then it will like uh, provide the information to the user that there is a content change in there. Like otherwise it's super horrible like every time it will say 1 second, 2 second, 3 second. So now it will say 1, 10, 20 things like that. And the new feature is like now we have non-linear font scaling. Now user can scale the font up to 200% and it might break our applications if we are using the dips instead of the scaling unit for the font size in our XML files or in our composed, composed UIs. So if you are targeting 14 you might need to make sure that your app is running fine when you are changing the font size from like a uh, hundred to two hundred percent. Now, our uh, most favorable right now, the <laughs> Jetpack Compose. So we will see all those features now in Compose. How we provide the content description, custom actions, click labels, and some other stuff. So the first one is like if you just want like if your UI is a, <clears throat> that particular image is only a decorative one you can just 
set the content description to null and it will be fine it will be skipped by the by the system so the the major important thing here is to note that now we are writing everything in kotlin and we these are the required parameters on the those components so when we are using the image or icon whatever in that case you cannot skip the content description either you mark it as a null so that it's it, it's like a decorative one or in case if you want to otherwise you need to provide the content description which is like for example i'm using we, i am setting the profile image for the second component here and <clears throat> now the next one is setting the heading so if you remember from the xml world we are setting the heading but there because the xml apis they are platform dependent so their heading is only available since android 10 but as compose is platform independent if you write this code you don't need to check the api versions and it will work all the way back to the 21 so in this case i want i mark this text view as a heading using the semantics so semantics is the way actually to pro provide all the accessibility information in uh, composables the next one is the live region which is how to process that particular event on the screen so same properties are available here assertive or polite so in this case i am setting it uh, assertive and the next thing is providing the accessible description it's so if on my ui i have a component which is just uh, conveying some sort of information like 45 dollars per day it's fine if user is just interacting normally with their application but let's say if you are they are using talkback then it's like dollar 45 slash day which is not a not a good description of that particular information so we are we can use the semantics property text or we can also use the context description and provide the information there so in this case when the system is <coughs> accessibility services are on and when they comes to this particular view it will say 45 dollars per day which is like more uh, it's a better way to representing that information so in XML, if you remember, like uh, we at the parent parent tag, like the linear layout, we set the foxable to true or screen reader foxable to true, so that all the co sub components of that given layout are marked as like a particular group, and it's the same kind of uh, terminology used in uh, Compose. So, for example, here I have developed that sim simple UI with the three components, like the uh, image view and uh, two text components there, and I want my system to process all that as like a single component instead of going through each and every component so i set the semantics on the column which is like merge descendants true so now when the system processing this component it will speak all together like profile image then the text of these two components which is now saying android engineer So next is focus handling, how we can customize the focus handling on an uh, in Compose. So we first need to create the focus requesters. So at the first line, I'm creating two focus requesters, like item one and item two, which is like Kotlin destructuring way of doing things. And in the column, I have two components, image, second image. So here I am setting the focus requester as item one. And on the second one, I'm setting the item two. And then on the focus properties, you can customize the behavior. So here I'm saying like when the focus left is performed by the user, go to the item two. So item two is basically the focus requester, which is defined on the image, second image. And then the, on the upwards, like when they perform the focus up, I don't want to, I don't want that my user can go back. So I can just say like focus requested cancel. So it will not go anywhere when user performs up. And same on there, like, on the left, I say like go to the item one, and if if there is a, uh, if user is performing the up action, don't do anything. There are other other properties that you can customize like right, bottom, down.
the next one is a state description so by default the state is the system it it uses the components information to exp convey the information about the state so for example that little hurt on the image it's the checkbox yeah, I'm using here icon toggle -able button which is composed composed way of using the checkbox so <clears throat> here if I don't provide the semantics information it will simply say unchecked checked based on the state of the component but right now I'm providing the state description which is actually instead of saying checked unchecked if you see here it says favorite because it's checked and unfavorite if it's unchecked so you can do something like this to provide the more friendly uh, state description to the user like what that particular action is going to do about in this case it says like unfavorite double tap to favorite so that is the click label I will ch explain next when it says like double tap to favorite in and the state description is like the first thing like the current current state of that particular component and then the action which, which action we can perform on that particular component so now we will go through a couple of uh, modifiers to provide like uh, making more accessible UIs in our Compose applications so the first one is the selectable so most of the time if you are using Android device you might see like we, we don't provide only a, like a, we, we don't provide a click actions or the select action on particular button which is like if you see here now it says it selects only that particular radio button which is not a better like a good user experience so what we do is like we merge those components together so now if you see user can select item 3 and if, if you see it goes next now you see it says like it just select that radio button which is it goes there it says like radio button unchecked but there is no information so we can group together all that information in this case I created the row I, it has two components radio button and the text and using the selectable modifier I can provide all the code for the for the check listener or the change listener you can say in the selectable which is like this one just flip that flip the value of the check boolean value there and you can define the role which is <clears throat> which is like providing the information to the system like what this actually how it gonna behave in this case it's like rolled or radio button so it will say like checked select unchecked radio button you see it says like not selected selected so if you are using radio buttons in your uh, applications you can use this modifier to merge the all the components together so that user have more space to perform the click action otherwise it's really hard to perform an action you really need to be at the specific position where is the radio button on the screen the next one is the toggle label which is the switch in this case instead of the uh, selectable we use the toggle label uh, modifier providing the same information like what to do on on value change and we mark the own value on check change on the switch to the null so that system knows that the row is handling all the click in the click action for that switch and if you see now it says in app notifications altogether but again if they go to the next one it is like just uh, in app notifications and then it moves next to the switch which is like totally mislead to the user like what that switch is going to do because now it says in app notifications then there is a little pause then it goes to the switch and it says like select or perform the action and the last one is the clickable which is again same way of doing things instead of toggle label or selectable we set the click label modifier set the role you can define like provide the role whichever makes more sense to your requirements in this case I'm saying button and then those two components processed together by the system and one cool thing about the all these uh, modifiers is like when we use this to, uh, like specifically the clickable and under the hood all the other uh, modifiers like the selectable and the toggle label they are also using the clickable so whenever we use the clickable then compose automatically make sure that that touch target is meet the minimum requirements so it will be automatically set the 48 by 48 dips 
I am not setting anywhere the size of this component if you see there but it will be meeting the requirements by 48 by 48 to make sure that it passes the accessibility requirements. And <clears throat> here I am providing the on click, uh, click label information so that when it says like double tap to activate instead of saying double tap to activate it will say like double tap to update notification preferences. And it's way easy than uh, XML you need to create a custom accessibility delegate then you need to attach that delegate to a particular component and then it works but in Compose you just use the clickable modifier to provide the on click label and otherwise you can use the on click semantics like providing more information via the semantics so you have two options either you are using if you are using the clickable you provide there and if you are not you still have a chance to providing the click label using the on click semantics it's the same one providing the click label the next one is the custom actions so Again, if there are any sort of uh, actions that cannot be handled by the tools like TalkBack or Screen Reader, you can providing those actions via the custom actions using the semantics. So for example, here I'm providing single action. It takes a list custom actions. So I'm just providing a single one, which is like label whichever you want and then what action needs to be performed when that action is selected by the user. And that's the way like Talkback will actually explain how to open this menu and then you go to actions and it will show you how to perform that action. For example, I have added two actions and it says me like add to account or update information. So next one is uh, testing the font scaling. So in Compose, we, we are using the previews. So using that previews, you can easily test the if your particular component is actually behaving as expected when user is changing the font scale on their system level properties. So in here I'm testing like when it's one, when it's 0.85 and now there is a 200 so you can also provide a 2.0F so you, you can test all this. And this is the way of actually combining all those previews together. So you can use the annotation. <clears throat> you can name it anything like here I'm calling it preview font size so you can just use this on your uh, com compose component and it will preview four times with all that different particular uh, information like the first one with 1.0 then the other three options so it will generate four previews for you and if you are more like you don't want to write a code there is a settings gutter option next shows up next to the preview in the code so when you tap on it it will open the preview configuration in a window so you can change anything you want but here i'm specifically highlighting the font scale so now you see as i think it's with the android studio iguana which is the latest one in the canary channel so now it also provides the um, support for the 200 percent so because 200 now user can scale the font scaling up to 200 in android 14 so you can test all those font scaling in using this. You can also configure using the preview configuration. So if you remember in XML, we can customize using the traversal order using traversal after and traversal before. And there is no support for actually traversal order since Android, uh, until Android one, uh, Compose 1.5. But with the, with the version Compose 1.5, it's available. And if you have some sort of requirements or you feel kind of stuck that you cannot providing the traversal order information, you need, if you need to just update your Compose version. And we have a new like uh, API is exposed by the system that we can customize the traversal order. So there are basically two properties that we need to set. The first one is, is traversal group. This goes to the parent one, like the parent group. For example, I'm using column or row or card I can set this property and then we can uh, with the help of the traversal index we can set the we can customize the traversal order so 
if the traversal index is the lower, that means its priority is the highest. So if you set it, it's the float value, you set like, a, let's say, zero and then one on the other component, the component with the zero traversal index will be processed first and then the component with the one. So here is ex again the example. So I wrote the this column, I set the modifier semantics traversal group. So I'm telling my system that this column is the traversal group so that it knows that how to process it. Then on these two components, I set the traversal index. It's the same index, so it will, system will be process it like a default, which is like left, right, left, left, right, and then top to bottom. So here I am <coughs> saying custom traversal order. So by default, if you see this uh, demo again, it, it goes to like one, three, two, four, which is not a best info, like a information for the end user that we need to provide, but you see it says one, three, two, four, and after I'm setting the custom traversal order, now it says like one, two, three, four. So now it processed the first column, like the first one, then the second one. So this is the way you can uh, customize the traversal order. Okay, so that's about how we can actually providing the accessibility information to our components. But the major and the more important thing is like how we can test our apps. So let's check that quickly. So we have a couple of options. The first one is the manual testing. So you just have an Android device or emulator, just install the talkback or any other accessibility service tool there and then run your app and go through each and every screen to make sure that it's accessible. The second is using the analysis tools like uh, accessibility scanner, it's freely available on the Google Play services. You just run that tool, it will capture all the information on the screen. If there is any color contrast issues or touch target issues or content description is missing, things like that, it will report immediately and you can perform based, perform actions accordingly. The third one is the automated testing. If you, are, if you are writing UI tests using Espresso or RoboElectric, you have a chance to actually enable the automated testing of your uh, user interfaces. I will quickly show you a little uh, code how you can enable it. And the last one is user testing. It's not the last, it's the second last. So even if we write the automated testing in a, and using an analysis tools, but the user testing is like when the, the real people actually, those who are having some sort of difficulties, when they are using your application, then you can observe the behavior of the users, like how they feel, or how they, if they are feeling any sort of like a problem, like a problems to accessing the application or they feel stuck somewhere and then take actions accordingly. And the last one is the pre-launch report. It's the, it's also called a PLR. So when you submit your application on the Play Store before actually publishing on the, to the public, there is a couple of reports generated and this report is actually having all the information and you can just simply select the subsection of this report for the accessibility and it provides all the information if there is any sort of issues that you need to fix. So if you have already written some sort of uh, accessibility testing in your, uh, sorry, espresso based UI tests in your application, you just need to uh, set accessibility checks enable. And the second option is set run check from root view. What it does is like it will process the full layout. So if there is any issues on the layout, like touch target size is missing, color contrast issues or content description is missing, it will fail your test and provide all the information in the logs. But the second option is like, if you want to ignore some, some results or want to skip some sort of accessibility issues, you can use the set suppressing result matcher and provide all the matches there. So for example, in here I am providing the matches, check names and the views. So what I'm saying is like for, for the text contrast view check, like if there is a text contrast issue is there, like the color contrast issue for particular view, for example, text view, first name, just skip it and don't, don't fail my test. We also have a couple of uh, tools uh, in build in Android Studio for, uh, and these are the three options. Like I will quickly show the demo layout validation. So when we are writing user interfaces, we can use the layout validation and it will show us all the issues if there is any. 
then there is a visual linting and the problem panel i will uh, show you in the studio so if you are using compose starting with android studio iguana there is a start ui check a tool provided by the system it's a similar to the accessibility it's a basically the accessibility scanner which is already existed for the xml layouts but now with the previews we can run the like you see that uh, little icon on the top and when you click on it it will run the ui check mode and it will report all the issues if there is any issues for particular given compose view and that's all for my slides these are the references and I will show you. So this is my compose code. So this is the last option that I just show you, which is like start UI check mode. If I run it, it will open the window here and it shows me all if there is any issues. For example, you see here, the button is too wide, touch target size is too small and you can take actions accordingly. So this is the UI mode and then if you open the <clears throat> XML based layout you can always check the problems at the top menu which is which in this case it says like one error and then there is eight warnings and if you tap on that it will open the problem panel here and you see all the all the issues in here so as you say layout validation under the layout validation you find all the issues so it says like too wide these two components are too wide and if you remove anything for example on this image view if i remove the i think i already set the content description so if i remove it you see immediately this is like the lint warning and if you pop over it says like missing content description attribute so you can provide it or either just say set it to null or set it like important for accessibility to know which is totally on you if you want to provide and I think yeah the next option is the layout validation so it validates the layout in all the form factors or you can select here basically here I'm setting the selecting the references reference devices and you can select basically a couple of options are there like the color blind font size locales so you can see if there is any issues in particular mode so you can also check here and then go to the problem panels to see the issues. Okay, so next I will. So I have right now using Pixel Pro 7. And when you enable that accessibility on, on this device, for example, I am using, because in our case, accessibility is really important at Manual Life. We need to make sure that our, each and every component is accessible to our end users. So I'm using the accessibility scanner. So that blue check mark, it's basically the, basically runs the accessibility scanner. So it gives me two options. Either you can record the behavior or you can snapshot. So if you, let's say I just snapshot the behavior. So it gives you all the information. It highlights the particular component. So for example, it gives the six situations here. You tap on one of those. So in this case, it says that particular view group, it has a fixed height and size. So if user is actually changing the font scale on the device, this might be like, a, there is a cutoff on the information if this has a more text in there. And you can just go to the next one or the back, things like that. Like there is a text contrast issue on this one. So yeah, if you turn on the talk back, then you can just simply navigate. For example, I just turn on, on and then just go through each and every. App suggest accessibility talk 2023. Content description, nav, sing, password, edit box, text view underscore two heading, error. You see it as soon as the edit box appears, error text view appears, it immediately speak about that because I set the uh, Zerti uh, like the accessibility property to a Zerti. Error. Check the and then Pro you need to manually test radio your app. With top back off. So even if you have written your uh, let's say accessibility automated tests and everything is working fine, but at the end 
you still need to actually run like the go through the manual you need to do the manual testing to make sure that it makes sense so for the image if it just says something like you just want to omit that error that i'm providing content description and it, you set it like an empty string it will say unlabeled image which is not a good experience to the end user so even if you cover all the scenarios you just need to make sure like turn on the talk back and quickly go through the screens and make sure that everything works as expected and yep that's all for this talk thank you everyone and if you have any if you have any questions feel free to ask i will share the slides afterwards good thank you